Today, guys, I want to go over my trade on Snoa. It happened about a couple weeks ago on August 19th, 2021. It was by far my biggest and best trade in August. I made about $18,000 on this trade. Uh, I want to go over this one because uh, I think there's just so much that you guys can learn from it. Um, Snoa. This was a big gapper on the day, on the 19th. Uh, over, up over 100%. And uh, if you don't already know, the bigger the gap, the better, guys. Uh, the further, it, the bigger it gaps up, it's just that much more room for this thing to come down. And let's start off is look at the daily chart. I'm looking at a two-year chart right now. And as you can see, every single time this thing tries to gap up, it fails. They turn into big red doji candles. We have one, two, three, four. And then two weeks ago, sure enough, we got a fifth. When you have a historical chart like this, where just everything's failing its gap, the stock's kind of showing you its personality. It, it's showing you what it likes to do. And in SNOA, it likes to fail its gaps. It never seems to be able to hold on. History always repeats itself. So I love seeing a chart like this. Uh, the next thing I'm looking at is it gapping into resistance. And SNOA, on the 19th, yes, it was. I like to look at the previous big volume days. And this one right here on December 11th, 2020, it had the biggest volume day uh, in its past. And that's exactly the levels where Snow was gapping into on that day. Snow opened up at about what, uh, 1109. And right in here, I wanna go look at the intraday. I wanna see where the best resistance levels are, <clears throat> where the best resistance levels were on this day. The best resistance levels are always going to be where all the back holders are at and at the price areas in which they're stuck in. So on SNOA right here, there was over 61 million shares traded on that day. I know that there's probably still people stuck right in the, up in these areas that are just, you know, waiting to get out. And as soon as the stock gets back up to these areas, they're probably going to turn into sellers because they're finally going to be able to break even. So in order to find out at what price areas that they're probably stuck at, I want to find out what the VWAP was on this day on December 11th. The VWAP is the area where the vast is the price areas in which the vast majority of the shares are bought and sold. So that's going to give me a pretty solid estimate of where the vast majority of people are stuck and are going to want to sell if, and break even. So let's go find out what that VWAP level was. And in order to do that, I always use Think or Swim. Uh, it's a really good platform that really lets you dig through the history of the chart. Now let's get to Noah, Snoa, and go to On Demand up here in the top right, and we gotta find the specific date that we're looking for, which was December 11th, 2020. And here we go. Now we got our VWAP level. VWAP level was 1275, got as high as about 1320 right here, 1325, when it traded around these areas. So this is just giving me that price area that I want to pay attention to. Ideally, I want to see it get heavy once it starts to get to these areas. I want to see it be met with sellers. Another resistance level that I always want to pay attention to is always going to be the high a day on those previous big volume days. So for Snow, that was right up here. This is another level that really matters to me because this is the levels that the stock basically failed on the day. And on SNOA, the high of day was 1519 exactly. The next thing I want to look at is to see if the company has any dilution. Does it have any shares ready to go that they can sell at the market? Are there any warrants? Um, is there anything the company can, that the company can do to further push down the price of the stock? And I like to use Flash SEC. It's really organized. I really like this service. And I scroll down, and immediately on July 30th, 2021, I see that they filed in at the market. Um, and it's ready to go. It's in progress. And the starting offering value is $6 million. Um, dollars. And I mean, it's not that big, uh, especially compared to the amount of volume that it is trading on the day. I mean, this thing's trading 100 20 million volume on the day. I mean, this thing was huge. So technically, yeah, it could just soak up that ATM and not really affect it. But nonetheless, it, the company still can sell shares and it does add to my short thesis and it makes my short thesis that much stronger. 
So we looked into the chart's history. We saw that it failed every gap. We found the strong resistance levels that matter to us on the chart. And we checked out the dilution. Uh, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about was the market sentiment surrounding SNOA that day. What was the psychology going on with big gappers on the day? And let's, let's talk about that. If you guys remember, uh, just two days before SNOA, so this was the 19th, and before SNOA we had VRPX right here on August 17th, 2021. This was a big gapper on the day, except this one did not fail. This one was really strong and it kept running. Longs were probably banking that day and shorts were getting squeezed. This was about a 300% move, that is massive. And then the day right after VRPX, we had PMCB right on uh, the next day, August 18th, 2021. And again, another big gapper on the day that was had a massive run. You know, traders remember this. And then right after PMCB, we have SNOA. Another big gapper on the day, up over 100% in the pre-market. And everyone's thinking, oh, this is going to be the next VRPX. Oh, this is going to be the next PMCB. Because we had just such two massive runners just two days in a row before SNOA. No one wants to miss out on the next big move. So now we have a big crowd to the long side. Everyone's thinking that this is going to be the next big play. And when there's a lot of FOMO in the market and everyone's crowded on one side of the trade, and in Snow's case, this was to the long side, I can't tell you how many times what tends to happen is the exact opposite. Think of it this way. If everyone's crowded to one side of the trade, well, what's going to happen as soon as that stock stops doing what everyone wants? As soon as it stops working? Well, that whole crowd that's on the long side, they're going to be rushing to the exits. The whole crowd is going to be rushing to slam the bid. And that's when you're going to start seeing some really severe pullbacks. Now, let's get into my trade. I took some shares short on Snow at the open. And I usually do that on the majority of my big gapper setups. Because I really have a hard time knowing which ones are going to push and which ones are going to just absolutely fall apart and tank at the open. And I don't want to miss out on those ones that just absolutely fall apart at the open. I want to be in some shares. Snowa was one that actually I wasn't really surprised that it did push out the open. Um, I mean, it's just take a look at the two year chart again and look at the charts behavior. Look at all these big wicks it has above the open on all of its big gap days three is the third one. It always seems to tend to push above the open. Um, so I'm not surprised that it did it again on this day. So Snowa pushed up right up into those resistance levels that we were talking about, right on those previous uh, big volume VWAP days that we were looking up, looking at, at that 1275, 13 area, it started getting met with sellers. And so I started shorting into that resistance. I did notice that the volume was very overwhelming on the day. And it started getting every the pullbacks were getting met with soaks and buyers just buying it up down here. And so I was covering and taking these quick moves. I shorted here, covered here, covered here on that soak, shorted here, covered down here, taking this little scout moves, taking little profits, reducing my risk. And then after about seven minutes of this, I started to notice that this stock was starting to consolidate. And it was also getting really long heavy. I saw that there was a lot of chat rooms buying up in these areas, chasing, hoping for some further moves to the upside. And if you haven't tracked this, I really recommend you do. But after a stock gets really overextended on the day, whether it's up 100, uh, 200, or 300%, and it starts to consolidate and it's getting really long heavy up here well after that consolidation it's gonna have to choose a direction and that's either gonna be up or down and way more often than not when everyone's chasing chat rooms are buying up here and it's getting really retail heavy and it's consolidating the direction that it usually chooses 
is to the downside. Way more often than not, it will break down. And I've seen it time and time again, and I've seen it in my data as well. I, I have checked this. Now let's talk about this stuff slam move and why I took an entry up here. Um, I mean, this was a very algo controlled move. And I mean, look guys, pretty much all these moves are very algo controlled. That's just the way the market is. And whoever was behind this algo was in a, probably a very large position and they need to exit. They need to sell in order to get out of their position. And what I see these algos do quite a lot is they take their exits at the most emotional areas on the chart. So after this thing started to consolidate up here, I've, just, I've seen this before. I had a really good, really good idea that this thing might want to go and test that 13 level because this was the high day at the time. And once that $13 level breaks, you're going to have whoever was short probably risking that 13 level thinking that if 13 breaks, this thing's going to want to continue to go higher. And then if that 13 breaks, you're going to have a lot of longs wanting to buy that breakout. So you got fear of missing out on the long side, wanting, uh, looking for a further move to the upside. And then you got shorts going to want to panic out, thinking this thing might want to go higher. So that 13 break is such an emotional area on the chart, which creates a lot of volume, a lot of fear, a lot of people either wanting to chase or panic out. It, it creates the perfect amount of volume for anyone that's in a bunch of shares to maybe get out of their position. And so as soon as I saw that $13 break, I was watching the tape. I was looking for, for some serious selling pressure, and that's exactly what we got. There was severe selling pressure going on right after that 13 break. And as soon as I saw that, I hit it. I attacked, and I added more shares. I ended up with about uh, 1170 uh, average. Uh, it was 1165 around there. And after that stuff move after 13 it fell apart and this thing pulled back you know any everyone that was trying to get out at this point and then i even tried giving a bounce and even this bounce got met with sellers you know any longs right here uh we're probably selling trying to break even shorts looking to attack now that we probably have some resistance up in here and it just fell apart um i ended up covering some right here some solid covers because we had a pretty Big midday bounce. I was actually trying to short it, um, and I started shorting too soon. Did get a little nervous right here, but it did end up failing. Uh, and I covered again some right here, all the ones that I added, which was pretty much a break-even trade and all these ads. But it was all right because I still had a bunch of shares up from this uh, 1165 area, 1170 uh, average area. And then we got an end-of-day sell-off, and I ended up taking a bunch off at the close, and. I actually did end up, I shorted some more right here. I got back in some because I did want to take some overnight. Um, and it was a great overnight. I actually ended up making another 10% uh, on the shares I had left. And that's about it, guys. Until next time.